From hatching after exposure in the vacuum of space, to rebuilding their own DNA like Wolverine after being nuked with radiation, these things are incredible. These are creatures scientists have found that can survive in outer space. You've probably heard of sea monkeys before. They sell these to kids, like, I don't know, pets, I guess? Just add water and you'll have this family of small little creatures who apparently wear swimsuits and go to the beach. They do make them look a lot more fun on the package. But what you might not know is that sea monkeys or brine shrimp are some of the toughest little creatures on the planet. Their eggs can go into a dormant state and in that state they can survive all kinds of punishment, extreme heat, freezing cold, radiation. NASA figured this out way back in the 70s and started using them in space experiments. In fact, brine shrimp eggs have flown on multiple space missions, including Apollo and later shuttle missions. Some were even taken into low Earth orbit, exposed to the vacuum of space, and then brought back down to see if they could still hatch. Spoiler they did. It's kind of wild. These things are sold in toy stores, and yet they're more durable than most military technology. Unless you were to just squish them with your fingers, but you know what I mean. Scientists love studying them because they help us understand how biological life might survive long-term space travel, or even drift between planets inside meteors. Tardigrades, also called water bears, are tiny creatures less than a millimeter long, but they're better at surviving than you, and me, and everyone else on the planet. Again, when it comes to harsh environments. In 2007, scientists stuck some of these things to the outside of a spacecraft during the European Space Agency's Photon M3 mission. That meant full exposure to the vacuum of space, cosmic radiation, and wild temperature swings, and guess what? A bunch of them survived. Not only that, they reproduced after coming back to Earth. So how do they pull that off? Well, tardigrades have what's called cryptobiosis. When conditions are harsh enough, they curl up into a dried out ball called a ton, basically shutting down almost every function in their body. They basically put themselves into suspended animation, and in this state, they don't need food, water, or even oxygen. Their DNA gets wrapped in protective proteins, shielding it from radiation damage. They've been frozen, boiled, blasted with x-rays, and starred for decades, and they bounce back. Some scientists think if there's ever life on another planet, it might be something like a target. That's why these things have been called the toughest animals on Earth. Deinococcus radiodurans sounds like a dinosaur, but it's actually the polar opposite. It's a microscopic bacteria, sometimes referred to as Conan the Bacterium. Yes, the names are deceiving. One sounds like a dinosaur. It's nicknamed after one of the buffest characters in fiction, but I swear these things are not massive. It gets its nickname because it can survive doses of radiation that would just liquefy a human. We're talking thousands of times the lethal dose. Scientists have blasted it with radiation, dried it out, frozen it, even dipped it in acid, and it survived every time. The secret lies in its DNA repair system. When radiation tears its genetic code to pieces, Conan just calmly puts itself back together. Its cells have multiple copies of DNA, so if one gets damaged, it uses the others as a blueprint to fix it. Basically, it has Wolverine's healing factor, which I think would be a more apt nickname. Wolverine Wolverine bacterium. Last time I checked, Conan the Barbarian can't grow back limbs, but I digress. Obviously, space is no problem for these things. In 2015, researchers sent it into low Earth orbit, unprotected, for over a year. When they brought it back down, it was still viable. Some experts believe bacteria like this could attach to asteroids or space dust and then travel between planets, a theory called panspermia. If anything ever manages to colonize Mars, it might not be us first. It might be Conan the Bacterium. All right, now for something with actual limbs that we can see with the naked eye. The midge. They may look like normal bugs, but some species of these little guys are absolutely amazing. In 2007, scientists sent some midges into space on the same mission they carried the tardigrades on, Photon M3. They exposed them to the vacuum of space and cosmic radiation for over a week, and you guessed it, they survived. So how? Well, it's the way they handle extreme environments on Earth that probably prepares them for space. Midges are known to live in some of the harshest conditions on the planet, whether it's freezing temperatures in the Arctic or dry conditions in the desert. These things have adapted to survive at all. And that's why their eggs and larvae are able to hibernate in a dried out, almost dormant state. When conditions are better, they basically come back to life. Lichens are one of those life forms you actually see all the time, but probably never think about. 
There are those weird crusty patches on rocks and tree bark, but they're not just plants and they're not just fungi. Lichens are actually a partnership between a fungus and either an algae or a cyanobacterium, and together, they're pretty tough. In 2008, scientists launched a bunch of lichen samples into space on a mission called Biopan 6. They exposed them directly to outer space, and when they brought the lichens back to Earth, they were still photosynthesizing. Like as soon as they hit sunlight, they just picked up where they left off. The reason they survived is because lichens are built for hardship. They're used to living in places like Arctic tundras, hot deserts, mountain cliffs. So their cells already know how to hunker down and conserve energy. When you've been training on some of the harshest conditions imaginable on Earth, space is just another challenge. Scientists love these things for that exact reason. They're like a living model for what might survive on Mars or the Moon. Basilis and Clostridium species can form spores, tiny rock-hard capsules. These spores are dormant, super tough, and able to survive insane conditions like heat, radiation, and total vacuum. Back in 2008, researchers launched spores of Bacillus and, and Clostridium into low Earth orbit on NASA's EXPOSE mission. They were stuck on the outside of the International Space Station, getting blasted with UV light and space radiation. Some of them were even left out for 18 months, and yep, some of those little spores still germinated after they got back. They go into total shutdown mode, and then wrap themselves in this thick shell made of protein and this. So this blocks radiation and helps them retain water. This ability is what makes scientists think spores could maybe survive the trip from Mars to Earth on a meteorite. Again, that panspermia idea. Cryomyces is a black fungus that lives in one of the harshest places on Earth, the dry, freezing valleys of Antarctica. These valleys are so desolate, NASA actually uses them as a stand-in for Mars. So yeah, if you can survive there, you're already halfway to being a Martian. In a 2016 experiment, scientists took these things and sent them into actual space, though, stuck them right onto the outside of the International Space Station for 18 months, and the fungus lived. It even kept its DNA mostly intact and could still grow once it got home. Cryomyces are packed with melanin, the same pigment that protects human skin from UV rays. Only this fungus cranks that up to 11. The melanin in Cryomyces helps absorb radiation and neutralize reactive particles that would shred most living cells. On top of that, its thick cell walls help keep it from dying out or breaking apart in space. Next on the list is Halomonas titanica, or Titanicae. This one's not a space traveler yet, but it's still living in an environment that would kill most forms of life. This is a type of bacteria that's been discovered eating away at the metal hull of the Titanic, 12,500 feet under the ocean. Down there, the pressure is over 380 times what it is at sea level, and there's no sunlight, barely any oxygen, and the water's freezing cold. In other words, a nightmare for most life forms, but not this bacteria. What makes H. Titanica special isn't just that it survives those brutal conditions, it's built for them. It feeds on iron and slowly breaks down the Titanic's metal, forming these weird icicle-like formations aptly called rusticles. Scientists think the Titanic will be nothing but a rust stain in a few decades, unfortunately, thanks to this bacteria. But researchers are studying it to understand how it could help with what's called bioremediation, which is the process of using living organisms like bacteria or plants to clean up pollution. Imagine using bacteria to safely eat away at old oil rigs and shipwrecks and even waste left in space. So if you've ever seen a weird blob of jelly on the ground after it rains and wondered what the hell it is, well, it's star jelly, aka no stock. It's a cyanobacterium, an ancient type of life form that's been around for over 3.5 billion years. When the environment gets too dry or too cold, it dries up into a kind of dormant state, basically goes to sleep and shuts down most of its normal functions. While it's in this state, it can survive without water and is protected from things like heat, cold, and radiation. When things finally improve, like when it rains, it wakes back up and starts growing again. Not an animal, not a plant, not a fungus, slime mold is basically this brainless blob that can solve mazes? 
Yes, it looks like something out of an 80s horror movie, but it's one of the weirdest and most intelligent forms of life on Earth. It has no brain, no nervous system, and yet it can solve complex problems like finding the shortest path through a maze. It's nuts. Scientists have used it to model transportation networks because it's that good at efficiency. But what makes it a good candidate for space is that it thrives in darkness, doesn't mind radiation, and it can enter a dormant state when the environment gets too harsh. In 2021, slime mold was sent to the International Space Station in an experiment to study its behavior in microgravity. It didn't just survive, it kept moving, growing, and navigating its surroundings like it was still on Earth. Some researchers think it's one of the best examples we've got of how simple life might survive and even think in space. It may look like a puddle of rotten mustard, but this stuff is tough and surprisingly clever. And that's going to do it for this one. I will catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video. Is that a f***ing band playing? Holy sh**, that's, that's like a, that's like a, playing like hardcore metal or something. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was construction. Yeah, I was like, wow, 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 that. That is nuts. <laughs> that is definitely a man. I just thought it was like some big rig. <laughs>